Well, that was a movie, all right. Um, so if you didn't read the title, uh, this is a rant on the uh, 1990 film Showgirls. It's directed by Paul Verhoeven, and it's a film that definitely has a bit of a reputation. Um, it was critically panned and, you know, kind of tossed to the side. But over the years, it's definitely got a reevaluation, and more people are sort of like seeing it with fresh eyes and, you know, having different takes on it and interpretations and stuff like that. Um, and I thought I'd just give you my take, my experience with it, and I just want to preface this by saying uh, my regular camera was being a bit of a dick, so I'm using my phone for this one. But, you know, it's a rant, so I can, you know, get away with, you know, being a bit, you know, DIY low budget. So anyway, on with the rant. So my personal relationship with Showgirls is that I watched it for the first time last year and I didn't really know what to think of it. Uh, I picked up on some of the, you know, the satire, some of the social commentary, but it perplexed me and it, it kind of robbed me the wrong way in a, like a, you know, typical, you know, so bad it's good kind of way. And I rewatched it very recently, like maybe like, you know, a few, half an hour ago. And I thought, it's proves so much on the second viewing. Like, it's like an entirely different film to me now than when I first watched it. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that I did some research before I watched it again, and I read up on what the director said, and, you know, kind of had a different lens when watching it. And it, it definitely was a different film. It came off as such a smart way to kind of, you know, exploit the industry and exposed a lot of, you know, like, male vices. Like, a lot of the characters in this film are very, you know, centered on, you know, exploiting and manipulating women who are trying to just, you know, go up in the industry. And it's a film that, you know, constantly is cynical. But the one thing that keeps it from being a pity depressing party is that there's a bit of light of hope in spots and a little bit at the end as well but I'll get into that you know towards the end of my rant and one of the things that I love about this film is the fact that the lead character is very over the top her name is Nomi and she is so energetic and so emotional that you kind of really empathize with her and you really I attach my own emotional experience onto her because her energetic and over-the-top manner just adds to the fact that she's so naive and flawed and she just you know froze like she froze herself into this you know industry and everyone is just constantly like judging her on her physical appearance and you know even her personality and you know her intelligence in some cases so it's a constant like reminder of who she is and where she's come from and I think it's definitely the emotional center of the film and it's definitely the most contentious because I know there are some people who do not like Elizabeth Berkeley's performance and I think that her performance is not necessarily realistic but it's engaging it's emotionally powerful and it's very well done and I think if you're willing to, you know, see a performance that's not necessarily someone in real life, but someone who embodies a certain naive and childish type of thing, then I think you can get into her performance quite a bit. Um, one of the things I noticed on this viewing in particular was James, who is sort of the one of the better male characters for sure. Um, I mean, he's he's flawed, like you know. As well but he's definitely one of the better ones um so you know he meets her in the club initially and you know they kind of hit it off although she's kind of hesitant at the start and then as the film goes on it's kind of revealed that he has ulterior motives like he's trying to do this dance piece and he's he's trying to be you know empathetic to women but he can't seem to pass the fact that you know he wants what all these other guys want you know sex like, it's pretty blatantly obvious, like, that's the one thing he wants. And he's using these more emotional aspects to kind of, you know, fool, not fool, but, you know, kind of manipulate these women into, like, doing what he wants and stuff like that. And there are no real good male characters in this film. And 
that was very intentional, I think. Because if you want to completely like exploit the industry and absolutely make a farce out of it, you got to make everything, you know, really over the top and farcical. You got to like kind of mix low brow with like intelligent writing. And that's exactly what this film does. From the beginning to the end, it never lets up. Um, especially when we consider, you know, the amount of like great lines in this thing, you know, I'll just give you a taste if you haven't seen it. So it's like, there's one line that goes, everybody got AIDS and shit. And that's a good one. And there's another one that goes, hmm, it's, it must be weird not having anybody come on ya. Uh, that's another one that I love dearly. And there's a whole scene in a pool of Carl McLaughlin, which if you haven't seen the film, I won't dare spoil. So, um, I think from this part out, I'm going to start spoiling it. So, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, come back, because I think you get more out of it if you have watched it, and you have seen the glory for yourself. Uh, so, once we get towards the end, uh, this is a scene that I think really sums up the film's goals, and it really tells you what this film is about. So, towards the end, um, Molly, who is Nomi's friend, um, Molly you know, up to this point, she's probably the best person in the film. She's more moral. She's, you know, she's good-hearted. She's the one who actually gave Nomi a place to stay at the start of the film. So, you know, she's caring. And, you know, all she wants to do is meet this, like, um, Banderas. I think that's his name. He's a pop singer. He's like, you know, he goes to this party. And so Molly and Nomi go to this party. And, you know, Molly really wants to meet, um, you know, Banderas. You know, she's, you know biggest fan um so they go to the party have a few drinks you know the typical lot and then she finally meets Banderas and this is one of the most gut punching and you know intense scenes in the film she essentially gets abused she gets sexually assaulted and you know and I'm not going to sugarcoat it it's a very serious issue and this film you know it's very in your face about it and the one thing that really makes it work, work for me is the contrast between the really fantastical Hollywood, you know, there's a contrast between Nomi dancing and it's very fantastical, it's very cliche, it's very Hollywood. And then it hard cuts to her being abused and this contrast sort of like pays attention to the fact that Hollywood tries to make out on the surface that it's really, you know, fantastical, all your dreams are going to come true. And then in reality, it's very manipulative, very exploitative. And I think this film, this scene in particular, illustrates that fantastically because it's absolutely perplexing you in a provocative way. And I think it works very well. Now, I think that scene could make or break the film for you in terms of like how you see it as a piece of commentary and I get why some people don't like that scene and this film as a whole really but I think you got to consider that Verhoeven is one of the best male directors I've seen that understands um you know the female experience like he's got a he understands you know what the industry is like, what exploitation is like, you know, all these different complex issues. And he does this in a very low brow, but very intelligent way that shows you exactly how this stuff goes down. And it's entertaining and it's fun and it's hilarious. And the interactions are fantastic. And everything is just so hyper and like constant. It, it doesn't give you much time to breathe. It's a very in your face film. And I really think that works in its favor. I, I really do. Now, I want to talk about, may as well talk about the very ending, where Nomi Banderas, he finds out about the fact that, you know, Molly was abused, so she goes and basically she kicks the shit out of Banderas. And you feel literally so vilified and so great that an abuser has been, you know, served. He has been, you know, absolutely pummeled. And I think that... Anyone who hates the scene before will get a kick out of this scene because it absolutely makes it worth seeing that abuse scene and seeing Nomi just like absolutely tearing into this dude and beating the absolute shit out of him. And I think the fact that these scenes are so close to each other sort of really complement each other and sort of tie into the film's themes of, you know, 
women making their own way in the industry rather than having help from men and, you know, passing in their own lane. You know, forgetting all the industry steps, going to a club, you know, getting audition, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's doing it on her own her terms. And that's what I think is so hopeful about the ending is that it has that sort of, um, that writing. But there's also a silver lining in the fact that the ending has a billboard and she she's going to Los Angeles at the end. So I think there's also a theme of cycle, a theme of inherent that it's going to happen again, that this... This stuff is just going to keep going on, you know, people are still being exploited, still being manipulated, and that's what the ending to me comes across as. And I hope that in the future we can try to, like, make these things more streamlined and more fair to people. Like, not just women too, like men, like, I'm, I'm sure men get absolutely, you know, you know, manipulated and exploited by the industry in their own ways too. So this isn't just conclusive to women. But Showgirls was definitely ahead of its time in calling out this subsection of culture. And even like a modern film, like maybe even Birds of Prey, the new Birds of Prey film, does similar things like women taking back what's theirs and fighting against a situation where they just constantly abuse and put down. But it's done in such a different way, that completely different films. But they do have a similar goal. And I think Showgirls was ahead of its time in that way. And because the film is so lowbrow and so, like, melodramatic and very, like, you know, trashy with its, you know, dialogue, I think people misinterpreted it as pure, genuine non-satire that is very, you know, not just intense, but very bad and just makes everything look like a nonsensical, you know, shit show. Like, I guess that's how people interpreted it. But my own personal experience, I don't really see that at all. I had an entirely different experience with it. So I don't really understand the, the, the hate for the film. I get, I, if it's not your thing, that's perfectly fine. It's not for everyone. It's, it's two hours. It's very... You know, it doesn't let you have a breath. It's, you know, the acting and, you know, the writing can really turn some people off. But I think if you're willing to give it a chance, I think it's a film that, you know, will return you in spades and stuff like that. So overall, I think that it is definitely rising to be one of my favorite films, I think. Like, I gave it, on first viewing, I didn't know what to give it. I think I just left it unrated because... I didn't know whether it was good, bad. I was just kind of like in the middle with it, I guess. But now I probably would 9 or 10 for me. I think pretty much everything works. There are some scenes I'm still kind of trying to figure out what some of the intentions behind them was. And I maybe it's very late in the rant to say this, but I'm not going to pretend that, you know, I'm not trying to anal overanalyze some stuff. Because I am, you know when you're doing film criticism and analysis, we can tend to, you know, overanalyze and see things that might not even be intended or there. But I think when you're watching a film, you interpret it and you kind of, you know, say what you think. And that's the beauty of it. Anyone could have their own interpretation of it. So someone could see this as trashy, you know, awful writing, and someone else could see it as really good satire and really good emotional writing. You know, it depends on the person. And I don't think anyone should put anyone down for liking this film. I don't think anyone should put anyone down for hating it. I think everyone should try to have a conversation about it. It's a very polarizing film. Like, just have a look at the, you know, this, the average on Letterboxd for Showgirls. It's absolutely, like, all over the place. It's so polarized. And, and that just shows you, like, it's not everyone's type of film. It's definitely an acquired taste. But if you're willing to give it a shot... I would say watch it. If you want to turn it off in the first hour, that's fine. I don't think you have to force yourself to watch it. I think it's a film that, you know, requires a certain patience and a certain lens to really appreciate it. So I do suggest, you know, researching about it and reading some reviews on Letterboxd, um, like uh, Cecil Selwyn's review and um, Bill Bry's review, if I'm pronouncing that correct. Uh, their reviews really get to the heart of... Um, you know, why this film works so well as it does. And I wrote a bit of a written one as well that kind of like sort of condenses what I said here into a shorter format. So, yeah. Well, thanks for 
watching my rant, my ramblings. Um, if you watched the film, I'd love to know what you thought of it. Leave a comment, you know, anything. Just, you know, give me a shout. Tell me what you thought. Um, this is MC1382, and I'll see you in the next one.